making reasonable adjustments in dentistry. Patients with additional needs have the right to receive the same standard of healthcare as everyone else. Some may face barriers to accessing dental services. To ensure that everyone receives the dignified and respectful care that they are entitled to, it is sometimes necessary to adopt a different approach and make reasonable adjustments to our practice. What is a reasonable adjustment? Under the Equality Act 2010, we all have a responsibility to make reasonable changes to our approach or provision of service to ensure that they are accessible for all people. By making reasonable adjustments, we can remove barriers to accessing healthcare. These can be physical, communication, social and service-related barriers. It is necessary to make a reasonable adjustment for all patients who are at a disadvantage because of their special educational needs or disability. You may need to carry out an environmental audit to establish how your practice can be adapted. Here are some examples of reasonable adjustments which can be made. 1. Physical barriers. This may include altering the physical features of the building to make your practice more accessible. For example, having wide doors, ramps, lifts, disabled toilet access and designated areas in waiting rooms for wheelchair users. 2. Communication barriers. Patients with a learning disability, autism or both may use a combination of both verbal and non-verbal communication. Makaton is a unique language program which is widely used. It uses signs together with speech and symbols to enable communication. The Makaton organisation have created a set of dental prompt cards which are available free of charge at www.makaton.org. These can be printed and given to patients on arrival to help them communicate throughout their appointment with you. It is useful to ask a person accompanying a patient with additional needs to help with communication. You may want to observe and replicate their style or approach. Using gestures, pictures and clear and simple language can be helpful. You may want to account for extra time during a consultation to ensure the patient can understand the information being presented to them and communicate their preferences. For patients who have a visual impairment, accessible leaflets in braille or in large print can be helpful. For those with hearing impairments, portable induction loops may help and ensure there is access to interpreters for British Sign Language if required. Be aware that there are many forms of augmentative and alternative communication systems. These are communication methods other than speech which patients may use. Examples of this include pocket talking devices and PECs, which is short for Picture Exchange Communication System and allows communication using pictures. We should also remember that autistic people may have sensory difficulties. Reducing bright lights or background noise which can be overstimulating may help with their dental experience. 3. Social barriers. Staff education is vital. By training the staff in your practice in how to make a dental visit more accessible, every team member can contribute to a positive dental experience from the moment a patient arrives. There are multiple e-learning courses available, including one specifically on supporting the oral health of children and young people with a learning disability, autism or both. 4. Service-related barriers. Each patient is individual and may require different reasonable adjustments. The dental environment may be a source of anxiety for some patients. Prior to an appointment, you can contact the individual or their carer and ask what reasonable adjustment can be made to make their visit more comfortable. Preparation is key. Listening to the patient, their family members and carers will provide you with key information on how to best support their needs. Re-evaluating the service you are providing and recognising that it may not be accessible in the current format will help in suggesting adaptations to this. A social story is a short description with accompanying pictures to help a patient with a learning disability, autism or both, through a process. Here is an example of a social story about going to the dentist. This could be adapted for your practice to familiarise the patient in advance of the appointment. Offering a visit for these patients at the beginning or end of the day may reduce anxiety and reduce waiting times. Some patients may prefer waiting in their car until the dentist is ready to see them. Patients may require sedation or general anaesthetic for dental treatment. 
Be familiar with where these services are available in your local area. After the appointment, make a note of what worked well and what did not for future reference. Try to aim for consistency where possible. For example, the same clinic room, dentist and routine at subsequent visits. A simple way to remember reasonable adjustments is using the acronym ACCESS. A. ACCESS. Making your practice more accessible by changing physical features. C. Communication. Incorporating verbal and non-verbal methods as appropriate. C. Consent and capacity. Assessing capacity of the patient where required and making reasonable adjustments to obtain consent. E. Education and prevention. Providing preventative advice and education to patients and others involved in their care. S. Safety. Taking a comprehensive medical and dental history to help decide what is the most appropriate way to carry out dental treatment, either with local anaesthetic, sedation or general anaesthetic. S. Specific. Making specific, individualised adaptations to the service you provide for patients who require them. By making reasonable adjustments in your practice, you can help provide patients with a positive dental experience, helping with the long-term management of their oral health. Thank you for watching.